TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. Well, by the time you see this, we won't be. So leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, I just heard a song with Wes Avelli. It was shocking to my soul. I had to cut it off. But anyway, um, <laughs> right above me, you could check out that song if you go back to the stream on Twitch. And You know what? Never mind. Uh, Patreon, post five days a week. Don't forget we do got merch. Let's get into this, though, man. This is by Mr. Who's the Boss? Never heard of him, but he got 17 million. Salute. <laughs> Let me hit that like button, sir. Might even sub up. Why not? Because that's the type of energy that I give off. It don't take no effort to like and sub. Y'all should try it on this current video. Inside the world's highest... Tech prison. This behind me is HMP Foss Way, and it's maybe the most technologically advanced prison in the world. So we're actually going to go through the full prisoner's journey, understand what the potential benefit of tech in a prison actually is, and then talk to a real prisoner to see the and what the potential benefit of tech in a prison. What's this for? You they they don't They playing video games in there? Like this this is crazy. What's this? actually is and then talk to a real prisoner to see the impact it's having on their life you, right? got, some, Dude. you got some carl for us to watch this trust me when i say it is very hard to get access to do something like this so you're about to see a lot of stuff you've never seen before and that's courtesy of dave who's helped to design this prison from the ground up and knows why basically every single decision has been made what we're doing is we're controlling the area by having an airlock here this is the first point of security when you're entering and the last point of security an airlock what why I mean, I guess I've done enough prison, like, documentaries. Or I guess an airlock could stop, like, any potential, like, breakouts. If you were leaving, you stay within these striped lines. They make sure that you are who you say you are. And only one of these two doors is ever open at the same time. Every element that we put in prevents escape. Now, as you can... It's look like an airport. Probably we start to see when you're dealing with a prison you have to think about security on a whole other level so while we've already been through both an id and biometrics check at the front desk and an airlock chamber there's more you have a look in here and you see how many cameras are actually observing you so there's one two three four five and do you know what the crazy part is in this prison as a whole there are not 50 cameras or 100 cameras but 1700 active cameras all right so then we go through the third stage biometric verification fourth stage metal detectors fifth stage of full body search feels more thorough than an airport for sure and you would think after all that that you must be through you would be wrong what i actually found quite interesting here is that the same biometric tech that lets the prison know who's going in and out is also what's underlying a whole load of other systems for example the issuing of equipment as well radios cuffs buttons parva is done via biometric as well for the staff that's communicating with the server yeah so the server always knows when a piece of equipment is in use yeah there's no high i guess that's good you know crooked 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 cops and things of that nature hidden from technology is this it? is hmp fossey this is in the uk this is the world's high most high-tech prison is in the uk and then just before getting out into the main prison compound itself this is the room where every key in the entire facility is stored Metal this room is so search. high security that you can't see anything we have to blow everything out here because the key design cannot leak that and if it sense. does or even if a single key is so much as misplaced then the entire prison would be considered compromised it would have to be entirely relocked and that would cost about two million pounds come on through what's the beeping telling me this door's open why is it a train? That sounds like a train is coming. And I'm not allowed to open that door until I've locked this door. So, when you open this door, that alarm starts beeping. That alarm won't stop beeping until that door is locked because there's a sensor on the inside. You can't... That's that's annoying. Open that door it. till that stopped beeping and that's shut. So, this is basically the seventh barrier when you're trying to get from the outside world to the inside world. And it's a video call with the front desk. You'll start to notice one interesting thing with all of these security measures, that it's very much not what you see in the movies, like seven separate lines of bodyguards, but instead seven very, very varied security steps. So security desk, airlock chamber, which is wild, almost pointless. Biometrics, no, it's not pointless, okay. Biometric scanner, metal detector, body search, door lock, video call. Back to the front desk to make sure that's you. 
apps, some technological, some using physical keys, some human control. This is like a In real operational prison with real prisoners staying here. Okay, keep talking to me. I'm, I'm interested here. Experiences are to be expected with the plat. See, I have no issue with the with the with the prison being technologically sound because what the guards may lack in in brain power or or strength, the prison could possibly make up for. Because I know y'all still understaffed and underqualified some of these prison people, prison guards. Y'all still get y'all employees from GameStop and ASDA, so it's not. I mean. All the help y'all can get. Oh, this is a very low tech part of a otherwise very high tech prison. But you know, cameras, cameras, and it's a very, very high steel fence. They're okay, so have any of y'all ever been to a prison? Hold on, let's go back. Hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Wait, where is it? Okay, here it is. Fed seven. Okay, so. Very varied security steps. Some tech. So normally it's. There is a, I'm trying to think. Of, yes, there's a security desk. There is no airlock chamber. This is in, uh, when my stepdad, when my mom's ex-husband was in jail, we used to go visit. There was a security desk, no airlock chamber, no biometric scanner. There was metal detector. There was body search. There was door lock, no video call. And then we went outside right here. Technological, so I'm using part of a otherwise very high tech prison. But you know, cameras, cameras, and it's a very, very high steel fence. They're built to a technical standard. The standards that we stipulate through the different categories of prison for levels of security and materials that we use in the build, we have to adhere to those. So just hold on, I'm gonna edit this out. A BRB. I'll put the screen. My bad, my bad. My daughter is, she got a cold. So she, every time she sneezed, she called my name. I go wipe her boogers. To clarify, there are four security and materials that we use in the build. We have to adhere to those. So just to clarify, there are four different categories of prison in the UK. Category A is maximum security. Category B is for prisoners who don't need maximum security, but for whom escape is still a risk. Category C for those who are unlikely to try and escape. And then category D, which is basically an open prison. Any fence that we consider as a risk, somebody getting over, you'll see a 5.2 meter fences. Once we get into the prison, it's more the general use area, the 3.6 meter fences. Is that a mash? You know what? Look at how crazy. Once we get into. This looks like a pro a apartments like in the projects. It's like. <laughs> this looked like Caprini Green before it got torn down. This looked like any project in Chicago. This is what it looked like. And jails are modeled after them. Says a lot. To the prison, it's more the general use area, the 3.6 meter fences. Is that a national rule? That's our technical standard, yeah. Presumably, no one's going to be able to jump something even half that height. That height gives you enough time to respond to get stuff here. We respond, and that height will prevent them from doing anything right. before we can get here. To a certain height on the fence as well, you've got this sheeting. You'll see the sheeting is on this side of the fence here facing this way, so it prevents that initial attempt to at climb as well. See, and also these are not designed with fingers getting through. No, they're right. anti-climb fences. Anti-climb fences. And also yeah, on no, all the bolts, we have to reduce them to a certain distance so they can't be used as ladders to get up as well. That's the type of thing we have to look at when we're doing the build. We cut the bolts off so you can't use them as a climbing aid. Yeah, your fingers really struggle difficult. to get through. Yeah. Really difficult. This has been tried, tested, and it's proven to be a good standard for the well, service. Well, so this is a 5.2 meter <laughs> anti climb fence. Hey, boy, he killing them Air Force One. He's creasing the hell out of them for the good of a video, but he got 17 million subs. He can do that, and he can go get a new pair. Hence, I'm not in the best shape I've been. But yeah, there's no way. 
There's no way. So after all of those security stages, we are in the prison. And while the technology here is so Whoa. advanced, there's one common principle that will keep coming up with the way this prison thinks about security. Your back lines, your kind of final port of call is all manual. Yeah. Is there a reason? Realistically, there's not a lot of risk to it because it's a physical action. So, we're going to start at the brand new visitor center. We'll get to test what happens if you take drugs into the prison. Experience being locked in an actual prison cell where the inmates live. Try out the high-tech workshops. Explore the secret beating heart of the jail, the control center, and then finally talk one-on-one -on -one with the prisoner about their experience here. So what you'll see as we walk around, we design the prison with fence lines that break up the estate so that we can control access and egress from those. So first up, the visitor center. So the prisoners come into here, they book in at this desk, they're all computerized, it's all on the system, who's expected, so you can't just turn up and say, I'm having a visit. It has to be booked. The prisoners booked the visit. Yeah. Is that on their tablets? Yeah. That's cool. Baby, calm down. No, sir. Yeah. I'll be damned if I get copyright by that. Oh, this is a lot nicer than I was expecting it to be. If you have a look up at the cameras that are in this place, I think even you'll be quite amazed. One, two, every five meters, there's a... I'm not mad at this. This is for the visitors. Okay, this is the visitors hall. I almost overreacted because I was looking like, bro, what is their color coordinated? This look better than my living room. My living room got a blow up mattress in it and a table for my daughter. Like that's this cap. <laughs> Camera. What's going on in there? Ah, I knew you were going to go straight for that. <laughs> Purple of visits, it's called. And these are visit booths that people can do up visits online. Right. Okay, so this is a, wow, it's like properly soundproofed. So you've got a HP computer here, and I'm assuming it's highly regulated what people can actually access on this. Absolutely. Well, it's well lit, and it feels very soundproof. So at least you can have the reassurance that the conversation you're having is private. At least it is from other inmates. Of course, the prison staff, they are monitoring every call. If, for example, you were clear to have a visit with two people, so your mother and father, if then a child walked in the background, it would shut down. Wow. And it's using AI to make sure that only the people who are meant to be on the call are on the call. Yeah. One of the key tenets of this prison seems to be giving the prisoners the opportunity to still keep in touch with family and friends. Because what they found is that offenders who maintain family ties are 39% less likely to reoffend, presumably because their family is A, trying to help set them straight, and then B, because assuming you do manage to keep those connections while you are in prison, you're not gonna then feel when you come out of prison like the entire rest of your life has disappeared. You've still got it together. So this is a virtual courtroom. Yeah. In what situation would you use this? When they're not required to attend court in person. It prevents risk, so if a prisoner's not leaving the establishment, there's no risk of anything happening while they're out. It's also cost effective. It's time efficient as well on staff. It's just a really efficient way to do it. Technology is absolutely brilliant, but also there is a place for old ways of working, to be honest. And some things you can't replace. It's a great thing to say on a technology channel. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> well, well, yeah. And I'm going to show you that with the dogs. Yes. He said dogs. And we're about to see why, even in such a high-tech oh, facility, yeah, that they're still deciding to use dogs as part of their security dogs arsenal. Dogs are intimidating. So there's four types of dog. There's the passive drug dog, the active drug dog, the explosives oh, okay. dog, and then the attack dog. More of a cat guy myself. This is a passive drug dog. His name's Harvey. When the dog's working, do not try and stroke him or talk to him. Mm. Right, Stitch. Good boy. This is uh, not what I thought I'd be doing today. Got a hit. So obviously a lot of this is very manual right now. Is it something that you feel like tech could ever replace? Not really, no. They have tried in the past trolled machines that scan up and down on you, but it's yeah. been proved not to be as effective. Dog's nose is 25,000 times stronger than ours. 25,000 times stronger. Okay, now the active drug dog. So what is it looking for? Oh, illegal substances that prisoners not allow. Oh, we found something. Good lad. Beth, Beth. So hypothetically, that dog could be trained to find my iPhone. Yes. Um, I, I used to have a phone dog. Phone dogs are trained to find phones, batteries, and SIM cards. And that would do a much better job than the app. <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, next up is the explosives dog. That's probably one of the worst jokes I've ever seen a YouTuber make, like, in person. You know what I'm saying? Like, not on TikTok and replay. Like, I'm actually watching a video, and that joke was... Terrible because find my iPhone works pretty good, in my opinion. Straight to the corner, she found it already. Yay! <laughs> good girl. 
her core instinct is searching, so even if she's out walking, she's still searching away. Crazy the extent to which dogs can train. The dogs I know are not like this. <laughs> and then the fourth and final. This mm. dog, no one's allowed to interact with them. You're not allowed to get within eight foot of them. No one asks for anyone. Minimum of eight foot gap is for what exactly? Safety reasons. That's okay. Into the lead. Because this is the most dangerous dog. This is the most force that can be inflicted. Right, so just to be clear, this dog can inflict the most force that can be inflicted, and I should be eight feet away. That's nice. So, eight foot gap at all times. Minimum. At a minimum. I feel like I don't quite have that now. Is there any tech involved in this, this process, or is it very much like manual, human and dog? Very human. Yeah, very much human. Yeah, I don't... I'm not even gonna lie, bro. I would not trust this. You too close and you can't get away because I seen I seen the bend you put on them Air Force Ones that'd be too tough on them. Like, no, 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 sir. I know why I asked that question. It's quite hard to think straight when there's an attack dog directly locking eyes with you. I mean, are you going to spark this one up? Sorry, when you say spark it up, what do you mean? Are they quick trainers? <laughs> <laughs> How quickly can you get over that fence, Aaron? <laughs> I've tried already. It didn't work very well. So the Eight Sleep is a pod cover that fits. It's on a map. That was awkward. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Like, that was an awkward. All right, continue. He looks uh, agitated. <coughs> oh wow. Okay. So this is a, a triggered dog in action, and it's trained to basically run after him and bite him. And you just bring that dog on, and the prisoners back off. Yeah, everyone knows, as you did. Yeah, as I did, yeah. <laughs> so your plan is usually to take the dog out, let it bark a few times, dissolve the situation. Yeah. We don't go out with the intention of setting the dog on someone. Absolutely yeah. not. But there's one more part to this whole incident response. Okay. It's if something breaks out, what you don't want to do is to just rush a staff member in there to try and fix it, because they could put themselves in harm's way. So there's also a drone. The drone is going to be thrown up into the air, scope the area from above to make sure the situation is what we think it is. So you're using a DJI. Yes. DJI Mavic. Mavic 3T. I guess that's smart. That's smart. They're using their... How much are you paying the people who work here? This gotta... Like, everybody has to get a good paycheck here. Because they're trained in stuff that other P officers are not trained in at regular prisons. And what's the reason you've gone for this one? We changed over to DJI because they're a lot more flexible, a lot easier to put up, a lot quicker for response. This is an Enterprise Edition of the drone. What is different about the Enterprise Edition? We've got thermal cameras on this for obviously the night oh, incident. Wow. With this system now, because DJI is very pliable with the system we use, we can data transmit live imagery now to our Gold Command. So during an incident, they get live updated imagery of what's going on. The drone can obviously follow the prison around. It'll also put out any points that are vulnerable, so it'll allow us to put containment lines in to keep the prisoner in one area rather than have the full flexibility. We're up and going in about 30 seconds. While the drone's up, the second colleague will then be data transmitting the imagery through to headquarters. I assume the entire prison complex is designed in a way that from this bird's eye viewpoint, you can see everything. Yeah, we can use this collaboration with our dog teams for searching for a prisoner if they've escaped. So we'd be the air support looking ahead of the staff and then we could guide them in and locate them into anything we find. In a way it's- So they don't even need the chopper no more. They didn't took the police chopper out of policing with drone. It's actually kind of reassuring for the consumer that even in an industry where it's so, so important to have the absolute best, that they're still using consumer-grade gear, in a sense. The tracking features of that DJI drone, that's good enough to track an escaped prisoner. All right. <laughs> so this is my response vehicle here. Right. <laughs> so we're going to the house block. Dude is not funny. Like, what is this, the Joker of the, who is, like, I mean, I guess it's cool to be, like, jokey, jokey, hee, hee, ha, 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 but if you're not funny, just hang it up. Here. <laughs> so we're going to the house blocks now. So this is actually where the prisoners themselves are staying. And after that, we're going to talk to one. Everybody's perception of a prisoner is bars, isn't it? And you can see the barless windows. And when you say barless windows, you mean, I guess, Glass. No metal bars, yeah, it's glass. I'm assuming there's a lot that's gone into the actual material as well to make sure no one can... Oh yes, yeah. oh yes. We build to technical standards and the technical standard for this is they have to be attack resistance for 90 minutes. We did testing on these and we used the national resources to do it. So they attack the window with anything we can find in the area, what we'd expect to find. We get one person to attack it for 30 seconds and we stop the stopwatch and then we put someone else in as well. And we do it for 90 minute period, which takes six hours to do it. That's Mm, that's good testing. 
they switch out somebody every 30 seconds so they got the maximum strength that they can have. Because, you know, some of these, <laughs> these prisoners, just all they do is program all day. Program is lift weights, you know what I'm saying, get fit, <laughs> shadow box, like they big in there. <laughs> okay. Phenomenal. The barless window is not about preventing the air coming in. It's about not preventing that view, which then refocuses the brain, really. Okay, now onto the inside, where you're greeted with the hallways, which is where the routine medication is stored for all the inmates. Now that we're coming into the new world and getting with technology, we've got this great piece of equipment for this biomedic. So they scan their finger and their A specific prisoner. medication will become available for them. They'll be in one of these lockers. So where we have put bars nice. and where we believe there's a that's need for wrong. bars, we've put the bars horizontally and that's because they look like blinds rather than bars. That's a specific decision you made for the psychological yeah. well-being of people. Absolutely. Notice you've got another big green button here. Yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> okay. Wait, they're all, all over the place. Yeah. Those are all emergency buttons. Yeah. And you need one there as well as there. They're put in areas of risk. Is there a reason this is held open right now? Yeah because you're not allowed to see the workings of a lock. A door is either locked or it's in what we call a lockback. Why we're not using biometrics for this? You'd have to look at the expense of them. What happens if they fail? And then just before the cells, there is a recreational area. As you can see. Gee. This is a nice pool table. This is nicer than some of the pool halls I'll be going to sometimes, not a lot anymore. See, I mean, it's pleasant, but it, it is what it is. Are they free to use this at all times? No, absolutely not. They're expected to go to work or education during the day. So just notice the entire building is an X. Is there anything specific to the shape of an X? Something to do with being able to see from all angles what's happening? You're absolutely spot on. If you were to sit there, you've got a field of vision where you can see down all landing. Loads of sound dampening. Yeah, acoustic yeah. tiles. It creates a calmer environment, doesn't it? So we need people to be able to speak to people at a certain level, which keeps that calmness. We're the default talking. Okay, so I thought this was just going to be like, okay, we're super techno technological for the staff, but they even got it implemented for like the prisoners as well. The prisoners is benefiting on this too. What type of prisoner do you have to be to make it here? Like you just can't go commit a crime and be sent here. You got to be, you got to be a... Like an, an outstanding prisoner, you know what I'm saying? Volume is talking volume. Yeah. It was very calm space. Let's go see a cell. I wasn't really sure what to expect here. All right, so you've got, there's a bed, there's a bed frame. There's a phone here. Who can they call with this? So it could be family members, any individual in they the can room? put in. We risk assess them and we vet who they're allowed to call. They then go to work, to education, earn the finances. A phone in the room? to pay for the phone calls. It seems like one of the big questions this prisoner is trying to answer is, how do you keep someone away from normal society for many years, but not let them forget how that society works? And so a common theme here is, there are plenty of opportunities to learn, to grow, to improve, to keep in touch with your family, so long as the prisoner also puts the effort in from their end. And the idea of that is to get them ready for normal life again when they're out on the other end. So you've got a monitor, keyboard, mouse. There's actually a mini PC strapped to the back. They can book medal appointments. They can do Open University as well. Wow. So that's crazy. So I'm not going to lie. If the hub is not available, I'll be in university all day. You know what I'm saying? What else is there to do? But do push ups, do ply, what is it, plyometrics, and, and learn, right? A lot of the equipment is obviously very inexpensive, very simple keyboard and mouse. But I guess the idea is function without wasting. Look at the mouse, though. Why do they have this? Ain't this an elite type mouse? Like, don't gamers use this mouse? Huh? Cash. You've got the television that runs through this as well. They've got, like, access to what channels? It's the bare minimum that we would expect to see. You've got the glass, which is the strengthened glass, and you've got a polycarbonate mm. um, outer on there, so it kind of creates a, a lock, and that's the way they get the 90-minute attack resistance. And I guess what that means is, if a prisoner went rogue and used every bit of equipment available to them in their cell and attacked that for 90 minutes straight, it's been tested to resist that. So we even test with a, a toilet and a sink as well. Everything with the kitchen sink. But we know we threw that as well. <laughs> we threw that as well. Who are they staff. called with this? So the staff. It's not to deliver toilet rolls because I run out of toilet. And that was almost funny, but it's just like when he said it, it became instantly not funny. The role yeah. is for um, medical emergencies or somebody in crisis. When the other guy, the cameraman, said it, it was okay. <laughs> I got a little smirk, but as soon as he said it, it was like... OK. 
Okay, so I am in the cell alone. This is what it would be like. I mean, it's still, it's a prison. It feels like a prison. Um, but there are some, you know, really thoughtful quality of life features, I guess. Like Full window, the fact that nice. we actually have a window here instead of bars. Obviously, there isn't much to do here, but the main focus will most likely be the computer. So using it for education and then using it for entertainment because it's, it's got a TV box attached to it too. That's the shower, you've got the drain, you've got the toilet, sink, and a little ledge here. So that's the cells. Now for the workshops Workshop. where the prisoners would go to Maybe skill up. Go, and the idea is prison. the prison has contacted a whole load of partner companies who work in the local area. And they've said, come in, teach prisoners who are on their final stretch the skills they need so that they can actually have employment ready for them when they get out the prison. So this is the industries building. We're about to see a digger. That sounds good, but you know what I'm saying? Nobody's, like, be realistic. It's hard to get a job as an ex-con, like. Simulator. This is basically a full recreation of the inside of a cat oh. digger. So it's made by the actual company. You've got That's a seat, wrong. you've got all the controls, you've got a Meta Quest headset, and then three 40-inch or so screens. 40. So let's Where take this for a spin. Yeah, it feels like the real deal. There's even like resistance on these joysticks. So this is basically like they've taken the entire internals and electronics of a real cat digger, gutted them, and stuck them in this room in, with a screen in front. Oh yeah, there we go. That's me. Oh my goodness. Is it, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it really feels like I'm in. Like the seat's vibrating. I'm feeling the engine, and that actually changes the vibration. Not gonna lie, this is this is heat. because construction is one of the jobs that they can get in. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of con constructions, be construction firms or whatever, be privately owned, and it's a possibility. You know? in the seat. That's phenomenal. I got it. I got it. Ooh. <laughs> it's got all the physics that you would experience in a real uh, machine. Oh. So yeah, this is not a toy. This is an actually licensed simulator, meaning that prisoners aren't using it to fool around. Education They'll be using it to get toy. real qualifications to be able to leave these four walls with prospects. And walking through the rest of this building, I couldn't believe how many of these workshops there were. We saw music workshops, barber work. That's where Maza, Ma, Maza L20, that's where everybody be recording, huh? Workshops, even classes that teach prisoners how to make the optics that go into glasses. Okay, time to head to the very heart of the operation. How is it that we have an electronic lock when we're already inside a six-step secured facility? It's a brilliant question, and the reason we've got this is this area is critical. So what we've got is the command suite and we've got the control room. So this is a restricted safe, area where you have limited access even for the staff that work here. And it's also, again, what we call a bit of a citadel. You can't afford to lose this area. This is where the cameras are operated, where the biometrics are processed, where the hub of the security is. So you can see why it's heavily guarded. This is the nerve center. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So this is a very real operational control room of the entire prison. It's where the 1,700 cameras are controlled from, but how? It's an intelligent system that's used by the operator it's and they program on. it to move the cameras and the cameras come up on screen where they need them at whatever time of day that's required. So when someone comes into this facility, you'll tell them like, look, there's 1,700 cameras here. Absolutely, yeah. and, it's, and it's recording all the time, yeah, absolutely. And now that's done, let's find out how all this stuff has played okay, into the experiences go. of someone actually serving their sentence here. Where are you roughly in your you sentence? Well, I've got four years left and I've done uh, best part of two years. And how are you feeling about this place as a whole? It's not what I imagined. It's, a, it's far better than what I imagined. I've done English in education. The education department was great. And when you say you've done English, so is someone here like teaching it? Yeah, someone's teaching English, yes. And that's an actual qualification that you can yeah, take? Yeah, it's an you? actual qualification, yeah. yeah. Right, right. What about contact with the outside world? Do you feel like you're able to keep in touch? Yeah. Ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to email a prisoner. Family, friends can email me. They can send me photos. I can't send photos back for obvious reasons. Yeah. And you can e What do you, like, what's your email address? First, last name at HMP. 
What is the HM pretty floss? Loss? Loss? Email a long essay, if you like. If someone subscribes to Unify Messenger, which is a secure messenger service, on your inside computer on your CMS, yeah. wow. you can send back and forth text messages, instant messages, just like you could on WhatsApp. One of the things I imagine would be quite difficult to being completely without well. a phone, without the internet. So if you think of something, you can't just go, oh, I'll just Google it. Yeah. It's completely taken away from you. So that, that is hard. So it's been years since you've actually been able to Google something. It's been almost two years, yeah. If I want to find something out, I have to ring my door, so or ring my sister or someone and they do it for me. Do you wish you had more to do? I feel like there's plenty to do. I don't feel bored at all. I like to learn Spanish. I've gone on to just translating on the computer. So that is actually the internet. So you in your cell, when it, they kind of you know lock you in, yeah. you're learning Spanish and that time. Yeah, yeah, I'm learning Spanish, yeah. You're really taking this as an opportunity to just skill up. 100%, yeah, yeah. There's actually as not you enough see. time to do everything that I want to do. I've seen a lot of things here that I didn't expect to, and I've learned a lot more than I expected to. So I hope you felt the same. And uh... I did not feel the same. I, actually, I did, man. This is this. What? How much did they say this prison would cost? I know they said if they, if one key gets lost, they got to redo all the keys, and that alone is two million. That's tough. Don't y'all go getting locked up to be in here, man, because I know how y'all be, man, with them laws out there in the UK. Anyway, TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.